Welcome back to Zach's Garage. In today's episode, we are picking up where we left off in the last episode. And we are going to continue working on this back seat. And my goal for today's video is just to find out how far we can get this back seat built. But we're just going to go as far as we can. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So the next thing I want to work on is addressing the issue of the frame being able to sway right to left too much. This is where our quarter inch plywood is going to come into play to help make the framing more rigid. I'm going to cut the plywood into two pieces that will be divided by the triangle piece in the middle of our framing. While I was cutting this first piece, I noticed the edges of the cut were chipped pretty rough. This was because the teeth on the jigsaw blade were so big. So I switched out the blade with one with much finer teeth, and the cut came out a lot smoother on my second piece. And after the pieces were cut out and fit into place, I was ready to nail them in. And a quick note here, I'm only using 5 8 inch brad nails here, instead of the 1 and a half inch nails I had used before on the frames. And on the topic of nails, now is a good time to explain why I'm using them. I'm sure some of you are wondering, where is the resin and fiberglass, or glue, or even screws? And let me just say, right now I'm using nails as a temporary way to hold all of this together and to assemble it quickly. So once I've finished assembling everything and I'm happy with the design, then I'll go back through and reinforce the entire structure with fiberglass and waterproof the whole thing. Now I can't move it side to side like that at all. So now the next thing is there's a little bit of play at the ends with our square pieces. And there was also some wiggle room for the triangle piece in the middle. To help with this I nailed on one by two blocks on each side of the triangle. I also added 1x2 blocking on top so that there's not an air gap between the framing and the plywood, and this also provides even better support for the plywood that'll be on top. Speaking of plywood, now I'm ready to go ahead and put the plywood on top of the framing. And I will admit, I wasn't sure if the quarter inch ply was going to be strong enough, so I tested it out before cutting the massive piece out of the sheet. And after sitting on it, with all the support we had added in the frame underneath, it felt strong enough for me. And once I had the plywood cut out and in place, it was ready to be nailed in. Alright, well I think it's time to go see how this bad boy looks in the boat. Well here we are, we got the old girl in the boat, and it really wasn't that difficult to carry it up and in. Let's see how it looks. Ooh. 
I gotta admit, it was pretty nice having a picnic bench in the back of the boat now. And one thing I hadn't even considered yet is that this definitely makes getting in and out of the back of the boat easier having that bench as a step. Boy, all these dang mosquitoes coming out here. Might have to put up and pick up in the morning. And just like that, I was back out the next day. I just had one of those moments where you just sit there having a good time and you wave off to absolutely nobody. Maybe some trees I'm waving to. And you might be wondering, how am I going to bolt the bench down to the boat? And I'm wondering about that too. But don't worry, we're going to get to that later on. But now with the bench complete, it's time to start working on the back of the back seat. And the first thing I needed to figure out is what angle the back is going to be at sitting on top of the bench. I used my level to get an idea of what it would look like at different angles. And I decided I wanted it pretty close to straight up and down, just angling back a little bit. I also used the level to estimate how high the engine cover was going to be so I could figure out exactly how tall to make the seat back. And while doing this, I realized that my vinyl handles on the sides of the boat were going to be in the way of where the back of the seat was going to go. So the next thing I decided to do was go ahead and remove these vinyl handles. And with that, we are ready to go ahead and start building the back of the seat. And after nailing in almost all of the pieces, I realized I had put the second to last piece in backwards. I know some of you are thinking, how could it be backwards? Isn't it symmetrical? In a perfect world, it wouldn't matter, but in reality, the lumber is almost never perfect. And this piece had some imperfections on it on one side, so I was trying to put the perfect sides all facing the same direction. That way when we put the plywood on, it would have the flattest surface possible to attach to. And since the nails were pretty easy to remove, it wasn't too difficult to go back through and redo this one piece. But I kid you not, I put the piece back in facing the wrong way two more times after this. I mean, what can I say? We can't all be perfect. So now with the frame complete, it was time to go ahead and slap some plywood on this bad boy. Alright, it is the next day now, and it is time to go see how this bad boy is going to look in the boat. So right now, these pieces aren't bolted down to the boat yet. The only thing keeping them from moving is just friction. 
I think I've got a pretty good idea how I want to bolt everything together, but I'm going to go ahead and save that for next time. And with that said, if you enjoyed this video, then smash that like button. And if you want to see all the future videos coming out about this boat, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. But that is going to do it for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.